you're watching, man. We're wishing for your speedy recovery so I can cast you once again. So if you want to head into the map, man, see where these two teams will be taking us tonight. Last time they played, it was a 2-0 in the favor of Slaughterhouse, and that was 7474 on Oregon and Consula. Now, Oregon will be repeated, but it's our decider. Theme Park and Villa, though, because of, uh, unfortunately, the lack of data in Liquipedia, we don't really have too much in the way of what they what these two teams previously played so if they have we don't really know but other than that we're, we're kind of coming into this blind we're coming into a lot of canadian cl i guess blind in some fashion because with a lot of these teams not just because we didn't have streams going for them previously but a lot of these guys are still relative unknowns at least on a much larger stage like challenge league because this part of the scene is so new and so adaptable and the thing that we're kind of hoping to do i think on all sides of the board is find a way to craft stories around these guys and give you a reason to invest because they're just not given nearly as much mainstream coverage as their just as their counterparts in example for um the united states challenge league division have way more history and there's a lot more notoriety on that side of the board than on the canadian side of the board so our hope is that we're able to give you guys more of an introduction because there's still a lot that even we don't know about these squads as much as we can do research on roster transfers or whatever it might be we're still hoping to give these guys a good first impression yeah and of course uh, something we didn't touch on with pdhm either lsg and um wav are two new players so not only did Slaughterhouse win last time, but PDHM have more roster changes than Slaughterhouse do. So Slaughterhouse might be coming in with a slight advantage just due to that, but we are going to be heading into the first map. It is Theme Park. Theme Park, not necessarily the most popular of maps uh, since it was introduced in the pool. It's kind of taken a backseat, especially for Oregon, but it is, you know, I, I do like the map. I think it's a fairly, it's a fairly balanced map. Of course, it is very heavily defended by just because it's not played all too much, but it's still cool to see a new face now and then. PDHM are going to get the first ban, and there's a very quick ban indeed. Who's it going to be? Is it Thatcher? It is. Uh -huh. mm. <laughs> you telegraphed that almost perfectly. It's almost like you knew. Oh, man, I'm, I'm a knower. What can I say? <laughs> I mean, this is just the way that the meta's been shifting for a really long time, Thatcher. Remember back in the days when that was only a Latin American ban? We'd see that happen in, in LATAM Pro League all the way back in the day, you know? Yeah. What feels like years at this stage, just because of what 2020's done to our brains. But that was very exclusively something that Brazilian teams would do, and it was mostly left alone by the rest of the field. And now in North America especially, it's still at a pretty high ban rate. Maverick, well, my also pretty sensical, given this, the state of the meta currently, and era also isn't a surprise so i'd call this very standard fare across the board um that still does leave a couple of options open if you have a thatcher and a maverick off the board then you're kind of guaranteeing that an ace or a habana will be played i think is probably more common on theme park than a thermite yeah. but we'll kind of see how these two teams want to play it out at this point ace has kind of not necessarily power creep thermite but he's taken thermite's place on a lot of maps of course there are still situations in which you'd use a thermite such as walls that can't be impact tricked because i believe every single wall that you're going to get a breach down on this map is impact trickable you're going to see ace more uh more far forward kali is also going to be six picked off of so interestingly enough for slaughterhouse there will be no thatcher maverick alternative and jacob we kind of glossed over during the map bands but knowing the maps in part villa oregon knowing the past history of these teams and knowing that pdhm are starting on defense who wins Defender who wins theme park i'll take it map by map you re wait you really want me to do this now we'll do this wait. map by map right now wait. in prep phase round number one who wins theme park as predictions yep you know who i am right yep the, uh, it'll be I'm great getting put on the spot to curse one team out of the first really yep okay but it, hold on it, it, it's it's only map by map and it's not based on it, it's not based on the whole series right you, no. you just want to know we'll who do, we'll do yeah we'll do we'll do map by map oh dear god um well considering oh man this one's tough mostly because you're right we don't have a whole bunch of previous history on these guys so it's kind of me just throwing one up in the air i'm gonna say it because slaughterhouse were known as axios esports before and placed higher than pdhm in the standings for stage one and the fact that they've got prompted who has previous history in two previous challenge league seasons i i gotta go with slaughterhouse but i really i i'm hoping i mean i'm wrong on that and that they're able to break the curse i genuinely hope that that's not the way this one plays out <laughs> well 
You heard it here first, folks. We'll see if the... Uh, you didn't hear anything, chat. If enough. the prediction curse continues its way into Canadian Challenger nope. League as well, as Varos Absolutely will already not. take some damage. In fact, down to half due to a Roman Lockers, I think that was. That may have been LSG. is now rotating up the yellow stairs. And he'll come off worse for wear. He'll trade half HP on the sledge for about 75, just over 75 of his own. Something else we kind of failed to touch on, this is a lab storage defense with an extension to Throne. Now, lab, when this map first came out, I just can safely say it was a bit of the offsite, but as Theme Park has been played just a little bit more, it seems like all four sites on this map are truly viable. I think at this stage it is, but we always had doubts kind of about labs back when it was known as drug prior to the rework there was always one that it, we never saw this map in comp previously so it was very much the throwaway so the fact that teams have been able to make transitions into using it effectively honestly is kind of surprising but it's also been in the competitive pool for long enough that you would hope to be able to come up with an effective strategy and an extension into throne just to keep everything on one floor also does make a lot of sense you can get a lot of top floor control if you're slaughterhouse but the problem is it's not just a matter of top floor control. You now have the entirety of Throne to contend with, and PDHM have set up utility. They've locked a couple of bodies in there, and at least for the moment, it does look as though it's been controlled by Slaughterhouse for a couple of seconds as there's both a Sledge and an Ash that are already beginning to move their way into bathroom. And not only that, but with the way PDHM is positioned, they are positioned to control the staircases. you got a man by yellow, you've got a man by... The arcade stairs as well, so there's really no avenue for Slaughterhouse to contest unless they want to clear all the way from cash and waiting and make the long trek around as they have yet to even move through split. There's a man in barrels and they've got bottom arcade control, but yet again, those defenders up top certainly loom danger, especially with control of the balcony. Slaughterhouse have not done a lot to actually clear anyone out, and it's gonna bite them in the back. Stove with the very first pick of this series onto Veras as Wavwell down off Tom, no finisher just yet but still technically a two-man advantage for PDHM going into the last 30 seconds. Tom has been down back in barrel. He can probably get picked up, but with 30 seconds remaining, that might not be a priority. Ashes will win his gunfight on LSG, but Stove, two kills on the round, and he already takes down the bodied Ash. Just tries to even the man count a little bit more. Slaughterhouse on the back foot. Fender side of the map, they can still find a way around it. Ashes will try to get some pressure into the bathroom side, but defaults the one sitting in showers, and he'll telegraph that beautifully. Telfy across the map gets his third kill on the round, and now it's just down to Prompted. He's back in storage with the fuser in hand, but all three members of PDHM can converge as soon as they hear that. Nice show, so wait, wait. Very he didn't go get past that kill? Stage. No, he didn't. The round timer mm. goes to zero before the Nitro detonates, and Telfy's robbed of a 4K, and... You know, it's so close, but yet so far, and it'll still be a round win for PDHM, but man, Stove got robbed. I thought the, the, the kill I was wanting is, I thought Ace killed that mute. Because the mute was just, like, sitting in the doorway, and Prompted was just laying into him, and he, I guess, just didn't die. That was weird, but that was extremely well played from PDHM. Slaughterhouse, I put a lot more emphasis in clearing horizontally. Then towards the top floor, as I said, PDHM controlled the staircases. Slaughterhouse just had no time to rotate all the way up and try to go around to Dragon and to waiting and clear those players out. Because, there, I mean, there were like three guys up there. And what, two, two, three kills need came out from the top floor control for PDHM. So not clearing really bit Slaughterhouse's attack in the behind. And now we're going to see Throne. And hopefully, I mean, this site has a lot more emphasis on the vertical play. So hopefully Slaughterhouse don't make the same mistake again. Theme Park has always had the reputation of being one where you're able to quote-unquote play the map a lot more than just playing your opponents. It's one of those labyrinthian battlegrounds that can be rearranged in so many different ways that unless you understand like every single nook and cranny of how it operates, Slaughterhouse are going to be looking for a lot of intelligence and looking to, or sorry, looking for avenues to really cut PDHM's defenses off at the seams. The main reason being, it's so big and there's so many different places to hide. If you leave so much as one person alone in a room, that can be the difference between life or death, round win or round lost. So just by nature of how complex it is, PDHM are already kind of sitting in the advantage. And that's one of the main reasons why if you go to this map, you want defense first to get a lot of early momentum going. Yeah, this is probably a map, one of the only maps in the pool where getting a 5-1 defensive half isn't necessarily like a deal breaker, right? If you're on Villa right. and you go 5-1 on the defense, it's like, wow, what an advantage. Same thing for, you know, Cafe, 5-1 is pretty out there. On Theme Park, it's like, 
Five on half. Okay. This is this map is so crazily defender heavy. It's not that big a deal. Now slaughterhouse will start their attack from pretty much the exact same direction. They'll take Gong. They'll take Tellers. That. What? All right. That was weird. He hit he hit the beams and the beams fell. The wall didn't, but that'll be the flank watch so they can watch the yellow hallway, cut down anyone trying to rotate down the staircases through bathroom or what have you. And yet again, slaughterhouse. I mean. There's no one going for the upstairs clear. Now, I mean, PDHM might have as much stock invested in the upstairs, but you have a sledge, you know, take advantage of it. And there are also bodies from PDHM situated upstairs, so to not go for a full top floor room is a little bit confusing, but if you're able to make it work and you're not too concerned about the flank, you just have people watching staircases, maybe PDHM actually have this in their game plan. Prompted will do his part and open up the wall in maintenance to look for a separate angle and try to force someone out from behind the throne. That's the main reason it's there. And New ping system working wonders as both an ADS and a Maestro Cam have already been located and see if you can't get the utility in there from Slaughterhouse to clear those out. For us, figure out where he took this, the damage from a top dragon, probably someone peeking the doorway and at least for the moment, Slaughterhouse are still trying to gain the map control that they need. They're now focusing on default. This is what we were talking about, leaving one person upstairs and they're able to clear Lucy out of initiation, then they'll probably have all the flank clear that they need. With one body down, then they can start making their approach into sight. Yeah, I think the damage was actually from Default, who's currently in control of the control room. Nate will sail out, but that'll down headless. ADS is all burnt, and the Maestro will go down. No finisher just yet, and Attackers Smoke just bomb. locking off the breach, making sure they can't push through. 42 seconds on the clock, and he's only got one more, so he won't be able to delay forever. Pretty soon, the unstoppable tide of this attack will come through. LSG will find the first frag on the ashes, though, and yet again, it's an opening pick for PDHM. Wading through the smoke is prompted. He'll breathe in a lot, and he'll just go he's for land default with two kills, though. Wave with another, and Stove with the finisher. PDHM with a Flawless rounds through the breach. Slaughterhouse can't make any headway. Trying to go for a play within the last 20 seconds. Welcome to the current meta, and it doesn't <laughs> prove anything in the way of Slaughterhouse's strategy was working correctly. They tried going for pressure from a couple different angles, but it took them a really, really long time to figure out if there was somebody sitting upstairs and try to take the Malusi down. It was one of those things where you're trying to focus on too many things at the same time, and then you don't account for, hey, top floor control is probably required, but again, it's really, really difficult when it's only one person, a, a two-speed, that can sit literally anywhere on the map looking for a spot to hide, and Slaughterhouse just don't do an effective enough job clearing out top floor and then working their way downstairs just because having one player sitting in a room by themselves, even if they're not doing anything, if they're not watching an angle, it still Attackers means that they can come around and flank and at bomb. any opportunity, and you don't want to give them any space to hide. Theme Park's great for that, and PDHM take full advantage. Yeah, the other thing about theme park is not only do the sites just lean in the defender's favor but it's so big it's a big map it, it's like really deceit like sorry deceptively big that's the word i want to yeah say. like it doesn't seem like when you're just kind of traversing it it doesn't seem too huge but i mean you know if we look at this overhead view I mean, look at how many rooms there are it plays perfectly to the way default was playing that he was just sitting behind the throne initiation no clear came around and he got a 2k flank malusi actually malusi's a three speed so, with Legion's gun, he, I mean, he got, I think he got one with the primary and one with the pistol. And then from there, you know, Slaughterhouse had two people trying to push the breach through a smoke canister because Prompted was pretty much forced to do so because there was no time. Right. Not the greatest situation. So PDHM with two rounds in a row so far on their defense, but it is their defense. And that is two, you know, Throne is the, typically, at least in ranked, is the, you know, get your free win and leave. So now they'll go to <laughs> their first top floor defense. It'll be Bunk, which is usually considered, you know, the secondary side on this map. Another reminder that this is Slaughterhouse's pick. Even if it's a bit of a slow start, they knew full well that they wanted defense on their second half because PDHM would opt for it as soon as this match began. So Slaughterhouse having, or sorry, having the band advantage because of where they placed back in stage one, having the higher placement when they were Axios Esports in last stage, and we're seeing if they can't try to make an impact. Tom is already having a lot of pressure on control and go for an ADS burn and he'll opt to use his entire cadre of flash grenades and burn the ADS sitting on initiation doorway. Keep in mind though, we're not heading to the initiation bomb site. We're actually all the way back in dorms, so he still has one more room to clear through before he's able to make any impact on that opposite wall. And he'll actually be joined by Prompted, who's gonna open up that initiation wall with two of those Selmas, and he'll only have one more in his pocket to use for later in the round. Tom will get the first frag on default as well. So finally an opening pick the way of Slaughterhouse. Very good job by the Ash Man. And Big Sexy has been traded off though. Nomad dead down downstairs? 
Is that where she is? All right. I think the nomad was downstairs for already, uh, for whatever reason. LSG was more than ready to take advantage of that. And Slaughterhouse are still stuck over towards the control area. I mean, this is why Bunk is considered such a strong site because nine times out of ten, the attackers are going to clear from the cash side. And if you go Bunk, there's one more layer for them to try and push through. Two more kills go the way of PDHM, though, and that's Ashes and Prompted Falling, and it's, all of a sudden, it's Veras and Tom. Tom's... So wait. Oh, no. Okay, that was LSG. I don't know why I thought the Vector was the R4C. Tom's <laughs> still upstairs. Or, no, he's rotated downstairs with Veras. They are just completely forgoing the normal push. Frags go over towards the balcony. That'll probably... Oh? Give Ooh. the defenders the info on where they are. Wav nearly gets fragged out, but... He avoids it for now. Ross just tries pushing up the staircase with no intel. He's cut down and the smoke cuts off the ash. I mean, that, yeah. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, at, at this point, it's more or less see if you can't go for a pick before the round is over. And this should go 3-0 in the way of PDHM. And yeah, it doesn't even look like Tom is going to be that keen on going for another pick. And Wob will be the one to clean it back up. PDHM. With three rounds in a row, a perfect site rotation, and they did the whole thing while avoiding the initiation bomb site. Whether or not we see them head back to the lab site for round four, we'll find out in just a second. But it's absolutely possible. At the moment, Slaughterhouse seems a little bit disjointed. I don't want to say they're you know, completely out of the game yet. It's only three rounds you know, in. The only issue is when they're going for their attacks, it seems you know, concentrated, you know, a, a couple of operators looking down a couple of angles, but no one's really making a whole bunch of round impact. And PDHM are also kind of allowed to go wherever they want. You know, it, it's their map. They've rearranged the maze to basically be however they want it to be. And Slaughterhouse aren't doing an effective enough job countering it yet. A perfect site rotation. We will see labs played again. I like this mostly because we didn't see this a whole bunch from a lot of other teams back when they were still trying to figure out what the default site rotation was going to be and somehow i still find labs to be a good site it's just so dramatically underplayed that it's really really cool to see um teams go for it and just figure out new ways of playing it, it, it it's a learning moment for us as well yeah lab is definitely an interesting site because it allows you to extend in pretty much any direction you want you want to do horizontal you want to open up the lab walls and play inside of throne you can do that you want to put upstairs steak inside of bunk and daycare and cafe you can do that too so it's although not played a lot it's pretty flexible although its flexibility can also be one of its downfalls if you try to do too much and spread yourself too thin right now pbhm have three men offsite default playing the horizontal i believe that's lsg and stoke oh, playing no. vertical and speaking of the vertical it was actually a run out to claim the life of ashes and yet again it's a first death and a second death to follow up as the jaeger plays a pixel on the window that's so unfortunate prompted gets caught off and already, it's not even it's not even 30 seconds in the round, and it's already a 5v3. I don't even know if it was a run. Anyway, well, it might have been a run out from the Malusi. The only issue is... Oh, sorry, not the Malusi. Yes, that is a Malusi. I've got to figure out which operator has the T5 now. But it wasn't even a run out from Wav. He just pre-fires from the window and waits for someone to come from the west side of the map. And it also drops Diffuser because that was prompted. I don't know why he's the one going for the first window peek. If you want to sacrifice somebody to a run out, surely it's someone who's in the hard breach. You see where the hole in the barricade is? Right. He did that stupid thing where you you like just two shot one section of the barricade so only that little piece falls right and then was just crouched under it and prompted <sighs> didn't check for it prompted just i mean not that he doesn't have the intel it's just if you if you figure out all of the run out slash spawn peak spots on any map then all of a sudden you become a god it's just a matter of whether you have the class or not to actually use them in a competitive game yeah wav uh now five and oh as is stove Wav and Stove are both five kills, zero deaths in three rounds. Oof. They are currently unstoppable for a combined 10 and 0 scoreline, and they'll be the two men tasked with holding this top floor to keep away the attackers. Stove on yet another run out, his second of the round and his second kill of the round. And because there's no one else covering Veras on the rappel, he's able to make it safely, safely back inside. 6 and 0 now as Tom and Big Sexy will link up inside of the waiting room, but uh, I mean, there's just no cover. Slaughterhouse are so separated, PDHM are just able to do whatever they want and get away with it. They have some semblance of strategy, but then you put someone named Stove in the lobby and all of a sudden it all turns to dust. A very, very cool. He can all of a sudden two kills from scaffolding as Tom tries to even the odds. The Nomad will be down and immediately oh. Tom is as well. Talk about Stove getting three kills. How about Wav with three on the round himself to clean the rest of the way for PDHM? 
Two very quick frags from Tom are traded just as quickly by Wav. BDHM, four rounds in a row. Slaughterhouse are gasping for air. Wow. Everywhere Slaughterhouse try to go, PDHM is there to slap them down. Stove with two kills off two different runouts, and Wav just kind of running around the map doing whatever he wants and killing people with Jaeger. So, I mean, I don't know what it is that Slaughterhouse think they're doing solo pushing anywhere at this point. I mean, with the way the entries have been going, you have to stick people together and play for the trade in any situation. PDHM are playing extremely aggressively, and it's not like we saw, right, like we saw yesterday with, let's say, the Joe game. You know, Joe are a pretty aggressive roster, but unfortunately, a lot of their pushes and a lot of their 1v1 plays were mistimed. PDHM have not fumbled the timing once, and I think that's perfectly displayed by the fact that Stove is 6-1, and one, Wav is 7-0. and oh. I mean, Default is 3-1 is and one even as Malusian. He's been pretty much disconnected from the site every single round. Now we're going back to Throne. EDHM with four rounds in a row. Slaughterhouse so far just look they can't they just look like they can't compete. Trying to figure out how Slaughterhouse can get their heads back in the game. I I, I would be remiss if I said, oh hey, like the only real reason that you play theme park is for the pure advantage that you get just being defense on this map. But BDHM are doing such a good job of shutting down Slaughterhouse's attacks that we haven't really been able to see if Slaughterhouse is really even in the lobby yet. It's you know, a very harsh way of putting it. When you look at the kills across the board, there's two people, Big Sexy and Veras. We don't even have an assist to their name. They're trying to, you know, create impact wherever they can, but they're hard stuck on those roles, and they're either, you know, the first or the last people to get picked, and they haven't been able to do anything even to, you know, apply damage to PDHM. However, Stove's been down, and he'll be the first person killed in this round, so that actually might be the advantage that they require. Tom goes nuclear and finds LSG at the same time, and Slaughterhouse seems to say, if we can't get something more strategically, then let's just try to push as hard and as fast as we can. Not only that, but PDHM got a little bit too big for their bridges. They got super aggressive. Stove tried contesting the teller's wall that Slaughterhouse have gone for every single round, and it just did not work well for him. You saw LSG came to support, either use his teammate as bait or go for the res, and that ended up being his downfall as well. Now it's default Wav and Headless, and minus default, now just Wav and Headless as Ashes rips the Malusi off the board. Nades come in to make sure there's nothing behind the wall to deny the breach from the aces. There's an impact. Is it low enough? Oh, wow, okay. He actually got that Soma. Good job. There's the second one. The second impact going to connect. It, it did, actually. I want to say right. it did. Yeah, the yeah. Soma stopped. So, that's the third Selma expended too, but Slaughterhouse are still in a fantastic advantage. They're three men up. If they throw this round and drop 5-0, and oh, I I mean, I don't even think we need to go to the second half to decide who wins this map. Yeah, let's not have an overzealous spawn peek in the way of oh. how effective this one is, and there it is! Ball <laughs> round from Slaughterhouse, almost, because Prompted just saw Tom get in the way of his crosshair and couldn't stop from pressing mouse one. Oh, right there, that's he had the shot, and Tom was just retreating, but... At the end of the day, that's one that you can, you know, pat yourself on the back for because you shut down a very, very oversell spawn peak from PDHM, and it works wonders in this case. I think you have a lot of confidence if you're a PDHM just because of how effective those previous four rounds would be. So you're like, you know what? Let's see if we can shut everything down, but Slaughterhouse do a pretty incredible read, check all their points beforehand, and have two kills before the first 30 seconds of the round are expended just like they had in round four. And it was the other way in PDHM. We're up 5 3 in the first 30 seconds. So it's a good back and forth. It's a way to stop the bleeding a little bit. Slaughterhouse absolutely don't have everything in their back pocket just yet. But if they're able to end this on a 4 2 half, that's normally pretty standard for defense heavy maps. That's exactly what they should be going for right now. Yeah, I remember when I was talking to the two teams 4 2. Um... I don't think PDHM expected Slaughterhouse to pick theme, and Slaughterhouse didn't even expect Slaughterhouse to pick theme, so... Um, because the two maps, two of the maps that Slaughterhouse told me they expected were going to be played, I think, were actually the first two bands. So, theme park, maybe maybe a pocket map for him? PDHM are obviously more than ready. They'll go yet again to bunk, so completely avoiding the initiation site for their entire half. And they've got a bit of a different lineup. Instead of the Malusi, default will now be running the Valkyrie for that extra intel, and a little bit of intel denial on the side of the mute as well. So, it's still, I mean, it's still a lineup that favors aggression. So I don't think PDHM, I mean, PDHM might tap brakes a little bit after that last round, but I don't think they'll completely let up. 
the other thing that's telling about this is there's Jaeger on the board. There's one, sorry, two Nitro Cells and four total combined shields. Goyo, obviously, with the two in his back pocket that he's used across the map already. Both the Valkyrie and the Smoke opting to bring ones of their own. Duffy is moving away from one of those more roam heavy roles as well. He's still got six kills to his name and he'll stick on the smoke and wait for somebody to come to him as opposed to taking the fight. And I believe default, he's the one sitting all the way back in office, so he'll try to cover in case someone goes for a take from the east side of the map, whereas everyone else on PDHM are content to stick pretty close to it. Plus, G actually, no, but my bad. He's gone all the way to bathroom by himself and we'll see if he can't make some noise with the vector downstairs as that'll be the, the site or the area directly below where you would try to entry if you were coming from cafe. So right around here is where Tom and his nomad compatriot are gonna see if they can't force pressure out and make sure that there isn't an explosive down below. Oh. And there's the frag from LSG, exactly what we were talking about. He's absolutely still in position to use the nitro from below, but he's able to get one frag and he can back his way out of bathroom. And it looks like whoever was helping the Ash, I believe the Nomad of Big Sexy, will dip as well. He's going over to join the Sledge, who's positioned in barrels, to try and stop LSG from moving outside the bathroom door. But he'll actually rotate up yellow, and I think he actually just dispatched of the Ace charge that was going off on the bunk wall. So great utility denial from LSG. Ace will throw out yet another, and now they're aware of the fact that LSG might go for the denial again, but instead... Instead, trying to rotate back downstairs. Now, those two players are inside of Cafe. Very susceptible to a Nitro Cell, especially Prompted, who's in a very default position behind that overturned table. I think it's just a matter of time before LSG goes for it, unless he's too busy worrying about the other two players below him. It'll actually be the scaffolding upstairs that gets blown open by Ashes. Ashes will take a lot of heat. And he'll back off back into Cafe. I think this Goyo play at the bottom of yellow might actually be the play of the game if it works out. But Tuffy, ooh, the smoke to get down with less than a minute left. Not the op you want to lose, but LSG is still looking for a pick in mid yellow. He'll opt to back away with no nitro cell in his pocket, and he'll just try to go for a pick. Maybe go up to the arcade stairs. Ashes will be the next player to fall, as that's default on his own roam, all the way back in the vault side of things. And now the rest of PDHM can sit pretty and wait for the picks. Default on another one. Wow, will kill it. Oh, sorry, continue to clean up. All we have now is Veros, and they'll get Pete at the top of Arcade. What? LSG uh, almost whips the kill, but he'll pull the P12 <laughs> out at the very last minute. I was a little concerned about that, but I said, hey, this LSG roam is absolutely going to work. No, we did see that. We did. No, That's we final kill cam. That LSG. There's, no, there's no way we can cover that up, man. If you wanted us to hide that one, make sure it wasn't the last kill on the round. Just be a little bit quicker. Yeah, no. 5-1 half. I think it could have definitely been a 6-0 half if they didn't get crazy on uh, on their throne defense but still five one half pdhm in the driver's seat through and through slaughterhouse except for that one round didn't really look like they had any semblance of a solid attack just because they kept getting caught they kept losing their fights to pdhm pdhm were taking their ones and winning them so we'll see if uh this happens to be whether or not it's a defender-sided map or a PDHM-sided map, as they'll Attackers go onto their attack, attack, and they will be bomb. taking the Kali from LSG, so a little bit of that easy denial on any kind of uh, any kind of walls, which is definitely interesting. I'm surprised PDHM didn't play didn't play Bandit or Kaid. They opted to just run Mute, who I don't even think was used for for the wall denial all that much. Uh, I want to say there was one moment Prompted was actually trying to clear Mute Jammers off of a wall, going for an initiation take around round two or three but it wasn't something pdhm put a whole bunch of heavy focus on and i think now at this stage it's probably going to be the same case for prompted to run the mute almost the whole time because you're leaving an ace on the board and you also now have a cali pick from lsg in the absence of a thatcher something we don't talk about as well is the fact that because thatcher has seen a rework i was curious about whether his ban rate was going to stay the same or not or if it was going to actually go down because i call it a nerf if you stole if, if you're not able to destroy anything that might be on a wall it's just a temporary disability as opposed to you know using it for full electronics destruction but i wondered if he might be banned less but i think his rate stayed about the same and cali has still seen a pretty like fair amount of play and that's not even a regional thing that's across all regions trying to find some counter just in the event that thatcher still gets taken off the board early yeah you kind of have to have it's almost a requirement now to have someone who is at least can kill people as Kali, maybe be a little bit comfortable. It's kind of like during the glass meta where you kind of had to have a glass player. You kind of now have to, with the, with the advent of Matt 
Thatcher bands, you kind of have to have someone that can play Kali. Stove passing by the doorway will take one bullet from someone playing aggressively in bathroom, but they'll fall back into the office. I think that may have been may have been the vector of Varas, who unfortunately is the only player. Actually, no, I just noticed Headless doesn't have a kill either, but Headless is 0-2. Rather than 0-5, and the rest of his team is certainly doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And we'll try to go to initiation and pinch off this player inside of office as well. There's a nade prep to sail through. Is it going to find anything? Not just yet. The attackers will now open up the office walls. This player inside of vault, their position is becoming more and more dangerous with each passing second. Just kind of uh, waiting for the rest of the cell to go down to stove wants to peek all the way through vault but instead he'll just hang out and cash and Varos actually could come all the way to top dragon stairs and maybe make an impact prompted making a late rotate and so he'll try to force himself out of the spot he's currently stuck in and he is in fact stuck and more of his pressure Ooh. will come out and actually no he'll stick all the way by the vending machine but he'll get his head taken clean off just a second later but a minute left and right now slaughterhouse are really just waiting for PDHM to make their move because PDHM don't have the intel required to make the proper push. And right now, Headless understands there's one in Kitchen and while wow, looking for the wall bang and can't quite find it as you will still get away without any HP lost. And Slaughterhouse don't need to make any really big moves here as PDHM haven't found the answer yet. They do have a lot of control over the office side of things. They have the soda machine wall open. So if Stove wants to cut off anyone on or trying to rotate up or down yellow, he can. Push is mounting over towards the bunk side of things, though, and I believe they do have the wall open. Tom will take one bullet. He's playing all the way back by Upper Arcade, so he's holding a long angle with the Alda. PDHM has slowed down. There's only 20 seconds left, and not much has happened after that initial engagement. Wav has actually rotated all the way around, but no, he's caught from Top Arcade, and he goes down as Ashes kills off Stove. It's a trade from LSG, but all of a sudden, it's just him as he has to push the last three players and likely go for kills. Only three seconds left. It's not going to happen. We're looking at Slaughterhouse's second round on the board as LSG saves the AD. Round seven goes away the defense. PDHM kind of amp up at the beginning of that one, then slow down, and then just get progressively slower and slower until the last 20 seconds, and then they're like, well, timer's down, so we need to make a move, and when they do, it's not the right one. Actually, they made moves, but it was right into the sights of every member of Slaughterhouse, and it turns into a 2-5, to five, and hopefully this is the reason that Slaughterhouse went to Theme Park in the first place. You know, don't have you know, a very, very aggressive attack, but they understand that they have the advantage going to defense, and so long as it wasn't a 6-0 and there's not that kind of, you know, mounting constant match point pressure, then it's something that's still definitely containable. It's just a matter of having the mental fortitude to push through knowing you're down by a pretty like considerable deficit. I think they can do it. You just have to stay strong, stay tough, and literally to make zero involved. mistakes. Yeah, you have to stay tough. You gotta stay toughy stove. You know, the, I've called him Tuffy more times than I've called him Stove at this I point. Know. What is it with... Can it, can it just be Stove, not PDHM? Man, do we do we have to keep on following the fofo -san example? Or yes. the the Tugboat oh, Yeti, God. the Arc Trooper Yeti ones? All of yes. the... I love those names. I remember when... Uh, who was it? I think Geo. Geo's name was just Escanor. <laughs> for like whatever reason. Escanor dot... When, when was he... What team was he on back when it was Escanor? I think Escanor. that was on EG. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was, I think that was a little bit too far back to be CLG, so I think you're right. <laughs> Escanor is actually, that's an anime character, so that's how we know Geo's a weed. Okay, that's how we know you're a weed, too. Yeah, it's from 7 Deadly Sins. He's Pride, I think. I don't remember. Can we talk about this on broadcast? Yes. We're talking about anime on broadcast, bro. Oh, all right. Creator said no. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Just, all right, my creator said, creator said specifically, no, he said specifically not that show. His creator doesn't like that show. Creator, what do I, I have death to deal count? with, ladies and gentlemen? I, like death count? I feel like Creator likes death. Count. This man is anime addiction. Just creator does like death. <laughs> Production, get out of my ears and stop talking about anime. I'm already having a bad enough time. Slaughterhouse are trying to make their move. Sorry, PDHM, on the other hand. But a vigil has been brought for the first time, and he'll be the one to grab the first kill. There goes Tuffy. Get that bad username out of here, sir. I'm sorry. It's not a bad username. It just confuses me, and I'm the one who has to cast this thing. Prompted will still try to force his way onto Cafe if possible, but it's been reinforced, and I'm waiting to see if he tries to go for this kill onto Default, who'll probably be in his crosshairs next. And across the map, Veros gets slapped by Wav, and now, I mean, 
It's not the worst operator to lose if her cameras are all in position, but by the same token, Veros is still one in six. Yeah, that's not great. And this is the one time that I'll say, hey, you killed an Ash? I mean, with the lineup Slaughterhouse is employing, that's not necessarily the biggest deal in the world. There's no Wamai, there's no Goyo, there's no, there's not even a smoke with a shield. There's n no shields at all unless Veros brought one. So, I mean, losing her Ash, not, not the biggest deal in the world. She's now, it's a position where in this current meta, if you lose an Ash, it's no longer the gun you're losing. It's also her breaching rounds, which you need to clear all that indestructible utility. But, I mean, Slaughterhouse don't have Malusi. They don't have any of that. And I would still say that's a trade in the favor of PDHM because you possibly lose out on that C4 from the Valkyrie. Yeah, especially with Ash's current place in the meta being so utility heavy, which is, again, something that's still kind of a shock to say based on where she was, you know, even just a year to two years ago. We wouldn't say that, oh, Ash is almost a required pick in every single attacking meta, but it, they just kind of do be like that. Now it's a matter for PDHM to get these holes opened up through the utility manually because they don't have any other methods of burning it. And right now, Slaughterhouse don't want to make it too crazy of a move. They've kind of turtled on sight and... If they try to go for something super aggressive, then they can get caught out from all of these angles, assuming PDHM is watching them ultra aggressively. 30 seconds to go. Headless goes for a pick by himself. He doesn't have any cell much charges left, so now it's just a matter of the AK-12. And he's got Diffuser, and he can make a push through Throat if the pressure is right. And so far, it is. Tom's taken down by Wab, watching those holes that he made just a second ago. And just to burn the ADS, but Big Sexy downs the Diffuser right outside. Actually, no, it's been reclaimed, and Callie's got it instead. The Ace does die, but LSG tries to go for a default plan. It's down to a 1v1 default and Prompted. And so far, Prompted's the one who loses the fight. Across the map, the plant's going down, and default's the one to clean up. It's PDHM. We'll grab a round on attack, and they will set us to map point. So, Jacob, let me Bro. ask you. Let me ask you a, a really, really hard question. I'm gonna. You, you might have to take a couple seconds to think. Oh no. But what did PDHM do right that Slaughterhouse didn't? Top floor roam control, for the most part. <laughs> wow! Holy crap! They took the top floor. <laughs> What? They have a sledge and they applied vertical pressure? Is is that what you're telling me? Well, it's black magic, so it's a little hard to describe. We hadn't seen it the whole of this match before. Did I use the right term at least? Is that, is that I think so, yeah. They did they did yeah. indeed flush out the roam. They killed Veras and Slaughterhouse was like crap. Alright, come back to site and PDHM was wow. like Yes, please. Oh Web did the sledge thing. He opened the floor above Armory, he put the nades down, and he went out and he fragged his mind out. He's, he's 11 and 3 now, because what Slaughterhouse failed to do when they were attacking Throne, other than the round that PDHM monkeyed out, they never went upstairs, so that means PDHM could effectively deny the dragon push from inside of Armory using those soft walls. PDHM went upstairs, opened up, opened up the ceiling above Armory, because of course Throne is non-destructible, Armory is, took those defenders, pushed them back towards Throne, pushed them back towards Split, caught them on the rotates, corralled them till they knew where they were, and at the end, won the 1v1 against Vigil. So great job by PDHM, and that is why they now lead 6-2. to two. They are one round away with a four-round buffer from ripping Slaughterhouse's map away from them. <sighs> it's really good to see teams play proper Siege, am I right? Hmm. Such a Especially in Canada. That's rude. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. Hey, I was a hey, joke. hey. Was a joke. We're, tr we're trying to do these guys good, not do these guys dirty, man. I, you know what I'll say? This is PDHM playing for Wick right here. The man's trying to fight oh, his facts. own battle with a ridiculously contagious disease. He's doing his best to fend it off, and he's not able to be here because of that. So far, default, and the rest of his squad are putting up this fight for him. Hashtag for Wick. Get it trending on Twitter, boys. The man is suffering, mm. but PDHM is putting on a show for his squad right now. Indeed. So especially, I mean, Wav. You know, Headless has no kills. He's currently on a donut. He is now the only player in the entire lobby still on a donut. But even more importantly than that, he's only died three times. Somehow. He is the support player. I mean, he hasn't even shot anyone. No assists. But he's rarely died either. And because you have Wav on 12, Stove on 6, 
LSG and default both on seven, you don't need headless to frag. You only need headless to open the walls, drone in, do his job, get the bomb down. I was gonna say not die, but he'll unfortunately get C4, but not before he opens the breach. His aces are still going off posthumously. And it's not an opening pick either. It's after Ashes was already taken out by Wav. Paras will take out the heavy hitter of the sledge though. LSG has been downed. Good find a C4 cleanup, but no, there's no more on the side of Slaughterhouse as Tom will push up. He'll be able to nearly claim stove, but no, PDHM still only down one man. Just kind of waiting to see whether or not the match point jitters are actually going to send Slaughterhouse into a frenzy, but LSG, Ooh. the perfect headshot, and there goes Prompted, the one of those heavy roamers now taken off the board, and Slaughterhouse, all of a sudden, it turns into a three versus three, and they kind of don't really know where they sit at the moment, but everyone on PDHM is still on the same part of the site by Dragon, and there's one less of them as Big Sexy takes down the Cali. Well, Diffuser is in Stove's possession for the moment. 30 seconds remaining. They'll need to figure out their push, and they don't have all that much time to figure out where, I believe, there's a Valcam that they're trying to look for as they spot it out and can't shoot it. All Slaughterhouse have to do is wait for PDHM to make their approach. 15 seconds now, and sit pretty, hold angles, and see what PDHM does. One comes through split. Default grabs one kill, gets traded right back out again, oh, and there's the final shot from you. Veross into split. Slaughterhouse, they know that they're on match point. They don't want to lose their own map pick. So they will stave off losing this one for at least one more round. That was unlucky for the Jackal. Uh, I think he, he had the ping on the Valkyrie and was about to peek left side of split. But once the mute got the kill, he got distracted and that allowed, that allowed the Valkyrie to swing in for the trade. But otherwise in that round, PDHM had a great entry. Unfortunately, their site execute was not up to par and Slaughterhouse locked them out perfectly. However, it's one round. They have to win another, in addition to their win on Throne just now, they have to win another full site rotation to take us to OT. And I mean, PDHM are hungry for this win. We're going back to Bunk, which is the site that Slaughterhouse won. So I, you know, I don't expect them to necessarily lose this site. They just need to make sure nothing goes wrong. They need to keep hammering at it they Attack cannot the let the heavy the downfall or heavy have. detriment they have get to them they just need to keep pumping to try and get us to ot the thing to also keep in mind is pdhm have a massive 5-1 lead on their defensive half but just because they're up 6-3 and you think oh they have a couple of rounds of leeway so they're probably able to you know try one or two random things out or maybe something more aggressive or no don't allow slaughterhouse to gain any more momentum than what they cur sorry than what they currently have because if they do for some reason you find yourself losing that massive lead and it could just because it could just be because you got a little bit complacent you weren't taking slaughterhouse nearly as seriously because if sh starts doing that if slaughter start buckling down on their defenses and start playing far more aggressively and more precisely than they have been as the past couple of defensive rounds have suggested they can PDHM could find themselves on the back foot just as badly as Slaughterhouse were. So don't get super lax if you're PDHM. Just keep on playing your game. Headless, now off of the ace and onto the thermite. I'm not sure what uh, prompted that change, but see how it works. I mean, thermite able to open bigger holes more quickly. So maybe, maybe that's the... the Line of thought, I mean, Slaughterhouse don't have any impacts to deny the Thermite, so what the hell? This Tom has taken barbed wire instead of those impacts. Uh, only two C, well, two C4s on the side of Slaughterhouse as well, but it seems we are going to see the not all too common Cafe Clear coming out from PDHM. Default leading the pack. You really see that man on the arcade stairs, but he'll often just open up the bunk wall immediately. And already, PDHM have an early line of sight into the pit. Prompting kind of forces his way back down. I don't know if... I mean, the barbed wire is in the right spot, but if you want to sit somewhere, he already knows, does stove, that there's someone sitting at the crux of the arcade stairs. But 
Trumpet will back away from it for the moment. He has to know that there's somebody waiting on this engagement. This 1v1 actually might be more pivotal than it suggests. Tubby moves his way back up. He just puts his back to it, and actually the kill will come from top of Arcade. His default grabs two, so Ash is able to work in all of that free real estate can now be claimed by PDHM. Default's now looking for more. Again, he's the sub in this game because Wick can't play, and he's looking for more kills to prove that he can stick wow. with the big boys, okay. but all the other kills happen across <laughs> the map. LSG, Wav, and Stove with their own frags. PDHM claim theme park. We'll head to Villa straight after, but they win Slaughterhouse's map pick. That is massive for how this series can transpire. Yeah, and 7 3? 7 3. Oof. I. Oof. Especially, I mean, Wav. 13 and 4. And he was what? He was like 7 and 0? Oh? the first couple rounds i mean absolutely insane performance from him and all of pdhm as a whole headless i don't think headless got a kill that entire that entire map i kind of think you're okay. right okay <laughs> so not only did headless drop a donut but he dropped a donut in a 7-3 win because of how well he did his job and how insane the other four are when it comes to fragging Pretty darn in sync, aren't they? Yeah. That's a little bit scary, mostly because you'd at least expect a support player to still be in a position to get picks, but the way that uh, PDHM opted to play that their entire defensive half was, you do your thing, let us get the frags, and we can come to you in the event that we need you for mm. some reason. And it was either because he had died before he was able to make an impact, or PDHM just didn't need him to go for kills for any reason, and he still did his job really effectively. I'm not going to lie, having one guy go completely without any kills and still have as dominating of a win as that, to me, that just seems a little bit scary to the rest of the teams that are in Canadian CL. Yeah, yeah I mean, they they essentially won with only four guys shooting their guns. I don't even know if Headless yeah. got... I don't know if Headless got an assist until, at least not until, like, the very last round. I mean, uh, look at all these highlights, too. Right. Most of these highlights are just PDHM slamming people. Well, here's Tom getting that nice double. Unfortunately, yeah. didn't end up winning the round because uh, it was... I mean, they just couldn't do anything after that. Wav with a absolutely massive performance. This is Wav's debut, I think, on the, on the squad as well. Sounds and about right from all the <laughs> roster transfers that we had to research before this one, yeah. I expected this to be at least a little bit closer, especially because, again, Slaughterhouse took the... Uh, this is a rematch. Slaughterhouse originally took this 2 0, 7 4, 7 4 on Oregon and Consulate. So they took 7 4 on a strat heavy map, and they took 7 4 on a frag heavy map. And we go to Theme Park, and they just didn't look ready. I mean, I don't know if that's something that you can really translate over to Villa either. I mean, from the way that the bands transpired, it is PDHM's pick, so we can kind of assume the Slaughterhouse can start on defense there. But Villa and Theme Park are also kind of very similar in the fact that all four of those sites are extremely viable if you understand how to play it. And just from having a defense-heavy map not go your way and you get absolutely slapped on it, it doesn't really speak to me that Slaughterhouse have that much confidence heading into this one. They will need a massive break because they're going into their opponent's map down by one. I don't really know exactly what's, sorry, what will be required of them. We're going to find out in just a second. We will go to a quick break. Map number two, Villa is coming up next. Don't go anywhere.
Map one between Slaughterhouse and PDHM ends in a 7-3 walloping by PDHM on the opponent's pick of theme park for Slaughterhouse. But now we head into map two. We're going to Villa. And so far, the trend could still very well hold true of not a single map or single match in CL for stage two on US or Canadian soil going to a map three. Once again, I'm Caliber Jacob. This is Crow. Villa's coming up next. This is PDHM's pick. What? do we have to do for Slaughterhouse to get in the game right now? Mm, I certainly hope that Villa being a bit more of an in-meta map, a bit more of a classic map than Theme Park, uh, helps them. Hopefully they're a lot more well-versed because Villa at this point is a very default map. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows how to play it in the rotation for so long. So hopefully we see a slightly better fight. I, I just, I'm really looking to see whether or not they're going to let EHM get those openers and let EHM turn those openers into steamrolls. They just kind of walk all over them. Now Slaughterhouse will start on the defense because this is PDHM's map. They can, you know, maybe maybe having them start on the defense too will let them climb the ladder a little bit before we see the half swing. Yeah, that's a, it's a point that we are looking a lot more into these days just because of the way that Villa's played. It's kind of like four maps, very, very small ones in different sections of one larger map. So if you start defending one part of, you know, like the upstairs or the downstairs, then you really can set up for the other one and force the attacking team to kind of attack two bomb sites at the same time, depending on how much you want to split your focus. And the bands do have an impact on that. But for the moment, hmm. Hatcher, Maverick, all pretty darn standard. And this still can lock in the appearance of an ace because these two were the exact bands for attack on theme park. And we might just see that get locked every round by the attacking side. And I wonder if we're going to see the Kali from PDHM again as well, because there's no substitute for the Thatcher and the Maverick other than her. For some reason, Slaughterhouse opted not to go for it. I think that kind of makes sense because, you know, PDHM weren't running Bandit. They weren't running any kind of wall denial except the Mute Jammers. And PDHM did kind of adhere to the Kali. Uh, LSU was doing a good job as her. Um, we'll see. What they decide to pick mira is the first defender band because it's mira and valkyrie will be the second okay so knocking off some of the intel both teams did play a decent bit of valkyrie and now instead of that utility denial we'll deny intel as well which means we still have wamai we still have goyo and we still have maestro yeah but we also have a wamai still left up which i kind of think is the more important thing for in this case pdhm to worry about because yep Kind of just like I thought, that's going to be an insta-lock almost every time. Prompted is still very heavily favoring the Rome game, and he played Vigil a lot on those very few theme park defenses that we did see in the last map. So, oh, never mind. He'll go for wall denial as opposed to that Vigil. I like this a little bit more, more because it's just going to make it that much harder for stuff to get off the wall, and there isn't a Cali pick on the side of PDHM. So, Defenders, good your bomb option on his part. He can also still roam with the Bandit because that's a really, really good SMG in the hands of a three speed. So his options are numerous. We'll start on Aviator Games. He's already opted to just dart across the map. Okay. Look at Prompted go. The band's going for reinforcements all the way on what looks like. Yep, he's gone. <laughs> Maybe he's gonna Bandit walls over here. Maybe. Uh, okay, well, all right. Coming off the of last map, 7-3 win. Or PDHM. Now you had predicted Slaughterhouse to win. And uh Oh no, not this again. The curse continues. So Villa, which team which team are you dooming? Who wins Villa? See, I don't have enough confidence in the way that Slaughterhouse played their previous map. Especially on the defensive half, even though we saw so few rounds on Theme Park's defense from Slaughter. Knowing that this is their opponent's map pick and seeing how much they caught wall up on the previous attempts on defense, I don't really have the confidence that they can do it on what is a defensive stronghold like Villa. So I'll flip the script a little bit. I say PDHM takes this one. All right, so we're going to be heading to a map three at the end of this. Oh, come on! <laughs> Ash is already going to take a little bit of damage from the entries of PDHM. And something that I actually found out, so someone, real quick before we get into the action, someone in Twitch chat said it, and I had to confirm it for myself. So I R6 tabbed West. Have, he does indeed have a 12.0 KD on Nook. I just, <laughs> I just thought that was tremendous. Um, Wait, is it a ranked KD or a casual or an unranked? KD? It's a, I don't know. It's whatever his, it's his seasonal KD. Uh, so, I don't know if that counts. I know Tab and Tracker kind of do their their stats a little bit differently, so I don't know if that 
Maybe that is. Maybe the man just hard locks I Nook mean. when he knows it's a really, he has really easy a, win and ranked. He has over a 2.0 TD in Zofia. That's his second most played up. So. Will we see at least one Nook? That would be cool. <laughs> Let's go. Please. Grab on Nook. I want to see it. Ocho, Ocho, tell him in all chat. <laughs> we want to see Wav on Nook. It was like the Aces play. The one time you see Nook get brought out was by Aces, like the back end of what season 11, yeah, I think. Like, We're like, oh, oh hey, we finally have someone playing Nook in, in, in Pro too? League. Uh, at one point, I want to say he did in that game. I think I remember he aced it was against G2. It was, yeah. yeah. It was but, uh, really, really good. PDH, I'm already doing the. We've already adopted the utility soap meta. You saw the shield inside of the bar hallway. I believe it was taken out eventually after a whole slew of utility. Oh, this is what the bandit's going for. He's going for this stupid hatch thing. I hate having to deal with this. So, what you do <laughs> is you bandit the hatch so you can't get pressure from underneath. You have a shield so you can stop anyone from pushing over by the trophy side. You just kind of peek the study doorway. Now, ashes and default. We'll be the first ones traded out, and the pixel angle works Ooh. for Wav. Goodbye to Tom and Wav's second kill the of the round. Gas charge, I believe, will deal with that shield, and there goes prompted as well. Four versus two already. It started out pretty even, but PDHM have yet again, after their first pick, just been able to snowball this into this advantage, and it doesn't look like it's going to be ripped away. Very awesome, just keep on pressing mouse one if he wants to go for that peak, and he'll actually get taken down from outside study balcony. Very, very quickly refried again by LSG. It works out beautifully as, actually, no, that is the pressure that wins out the round is that final Maestro fight. So, BDHM picking up where they left off on Theme Park. Pretty darn dominating win, and that's not enough evidence of Slaughterhouse still trying to figure things out for themselves. You lose the Aviator games in a 4-1 I think advantage at the very very end they're they're still trying to pick the pieces up and i'm wondering if it's already after one round too late for them to regain their composure yeah that was a really well put together push by phm i mean wav walking in taking out um who was that taking out ashes using the prone pixel angle against the Womai, who got i guess decided to hold behind the bar peeking the doorway instead of just actually sitting Defender, behind the bar and the ash by attackers. there was no more utility covering the bandit the ash knew she could just stick the breaching round on the wall next to the shield instead of on the shield because otherwise it would, get, it would get destroyed and the bandit didn't really react kind of looked like he just kind of gave up and sat there. so not a lot he could do in a 4v2 pushing onto the site and yeah it was a it was a 4v1 advantage there Pitch perfect round from PDHM, and now we're gonna swap on a trophy. Or sorry, not nope. trophy. Dining. Yeah. And Tom is on cat. So at this point, I think it's it, it's it's really, really kind of a cop out to say, oh, they're going kitchen. We didn't think they'd go kitchen when they still have top four bomb sites. At this stage, if you're playing your defense appropriately, which I'm curious if Slaughterhouse is currently doing, whether they have the top floor control or setup that's necessary to really defend against going kitchen at this stage in the game. The other thing is Capcan is intriguing, but also not still out of the ordinary. I still think he's a pretty darn underrated operator pick, especially since an IQ has not been played at any point in this game and also isn't on the attacking roster for PDHM. So unless they're checking their corners super carefully, you could stop a pretty effective, uh, really, really fast, hard push coming in. But it's just a matter of whether Slaughterhouse have the defense necessary to stop PDHM from just rushing into sight. And right now, it looks like most of, most of them are still situated downstairs as opposed to them. What I'm a little bit worried about about the cap pin, though, is cap pin really punishes teams that... Uh, take a long time and like to use the clock. PDHM, other than, you know, maybe save a couple rounds on Theme Park, have been really quick. So they're not necessarily going to be pressured to push into the bomb site and not have time to look down at their feet as the cam will go and so will Big Sexy default with the first pick, making amends for his opening death in the last round. He'll now peek into China trying to use those floor holes as Stove takes out Ashes. He'll deal damage to Prompt and not able to finish off the Goyo, but still, yet again, a two-man advantage for PDHM. There's Woo! the pop flash and a great play by Stove, followed up by default. It's all up to one, but Tom goes down. The three came from Stove and PDHM take round two flawlessly. Just as quickly as you were talking about PDHM being a fast-moving squad, that round is over, and we just passed the halfway threshold on it. That's how quickly PDHM Jeez. wanted to move on to site it, even with 
a cap can in play, even knowing that there was that kind of gadgetry situated around the bomb site, they recognized the same thing that Slaughterhouse hasn't been doing. Put people on top floor and force PDHM to come to you there. They didn't do it. They didn't have the manpower upstairs. PDHM didn't have to devote their own utility and operators to trying to clear people out directly above the bomb site, and they just went for it. It's a triple prong approach for PDHM as they had the Ash basically by herself the whole time as Stove was able to go for kills basically wherever it pleased him. And Slaughterhouse didn't have an answer for it because they didn't have players situated appropriately. It, it's, it's not a good showing for Slaughterhouse, the first match that they have in Canadian CL, and they're doing this. It's really, really worrying to see. And it was, I, I'd like to point out too, it's not often we see pop flashes like that from, uh, from like Ashman and stuff. Stove but they're really cool. That. Stove played that perfectly. And if, yeah. I think if default didn't get that kill on, I think that was the, the pulse, then I think Stove would have gotten a four here. But it, it's interesting you say too about the, the whole top floor control thing. Because PDHM pushed so hard and fast horizontally, the one guy they had on top floor was forced to peek and immediately lost his fight to default. If yep. Big Sexy didn't lose that fight, maybe he would have had more say over the round. Maybe that top floor could have been used against PDHM because, you know, you can peek through the holes and deny the memo push, deny the memo door, whatever. Uh, but I mean, PDHM are just, they're quick, man. And uh, four players at the two rounds currently sitting on zero deaths. Wav and Stove, the second game in a row, leading the pack in kills within the first couple rounds. Looks like they want to be just as aggressive as now we'll go for the third site for Slaughterhouse. It's now Trophy. There's the Jaeger in the corner, and... Well, Come on! What do you know? It's like the script is already written. Ashes goes down to none other than Stone. And here's here's the second. Kill. Here's no the second. No chance! PDHM on a tear! The drones come in, the pings are out, and Stove's got two kills before we even have one round progress... Sorry, one minute progressing in this round. PDHM have control already. Plenty of drone intel, and now Slaughterhouse again sent really by the fast kills for PDHM. They don't have an answer for this. It's the droning and the teamwork there from PDHM. So they know the Jaeger is there. As the Ash wide swings, the Sledge comes in too for the trade. Sledge is the one that takes the initial gunfight. You've also got Ash to pick up the kill. Then when the drone comes in to AVG, they see the mute. The mute obviously armed with the SMG 11, shoots the drone, is like, okay, I have to reload. Stop. Stove hears the reload animation and goes for the push. Brilliant play by him. Headless will take a little bit of damage down to half HP, but still, his teammates are stacked over towards the landing. Wav will get his first kill of the round on the Big Sexy. The smoke goes down. It's Tom and Veraz in a two versus five, and we might be staring on the barrel of yet another flawless round. He'll swing the window trying to take the head off a of Headless as LSG will start to get the plant down on the Nomad. Is there anything Tom can do to deny? No, Headless will get his first kill in the map on the Veraz. No donut for him. And Default finishes off yet again a flawless round, two in a row for PDHM, and three attacks in a row taking every single site that Slaughterhouse has tried to change to. I don't care anymore. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And I think Slaughterhouse is probably going to get really mad at me. And I'm sorry for saying it, but I think it needs to be said. I didn't know it was possible to broadcast T hunts in Challenge League. Oh. Had to be done. I'm going to have to say it because that's a perfect site rotation for PDHM. And uh... two flawless Sla rounds. Yeah. And Headless row. got a kill. Well, okay, that's not good. We actually wanted Headless to see if it could... Oh, uh, if, <laughs> if, if he could drop like, donuts frag twice. for the entire series, if he could. If this is only a two-map series, which it looks like it very well might be Attackers at this point, uh, having Headless go, like, completely killless would have been cool. By the way, we actually did double-check the scoreboard before this one started. We thought Headless went both zero kills and zero assists. He had one assist. Oh, yeah, and I was so sad. I was like, I, I was like, can we please just keep it at, at zero, zero? And I think he had like four or five deaths, but nope. And now he's got one kill as opposed to just the zero kills plus one assist from last game. I was just like, man, why can't him, we like, keep it this way? I'm making like the ultimate support IGL player. <laughs> I remember there was actually, um, I don't know what you probably don't know about, but there was a T3 game uh, in EPS. It, there's this team called Phantom Troop that are probably the, like, considered one of the top T3 teams right now. They're all, mm -hmm. they're all underagers. They had a game go to, I think it was a 7-5 win against another top team. And Poison, I don't think he's watching, but shout out to Poison. Shout out to Callum. 0-11. Oh 
Really? Zero and eleven playing IGL hard boots and smoke in the one. See, that's a little bit different because maybe at the very least he could have been playing. No! no! <laughs> And you just stand there? There are tracers in this game! Man's got no clue. Veros doesn't have any idea where the pressure is and has his head popped off before he understands what's happening. That's... Oh, no. I mean, Default even missed the first one tap. And then he did. Again. That's why I was, con I was concerned he was about to miss the second one and Veros would have stepped out of the way, but... Mm -hmm. Wherewithal from Slaughterhouse is just in the gutter at the moment. I mean, what, well, what can they do? PDHM are right now, like, a perfect sync. And without the Maestro, it looks like the players that they had set up the roam for over towards Trophy are just like, nope, no, <laughs> no, no more. <laughs> now, the Bandit does have an ADS. So, okay, so here's the swap from Slaughterhouse. They know that PDHM is not bringing Havana, so they know that the Bandit is not going to get naded from below, so what do they do instead? They have an ADS on top of the hatch so that they can protect the player behind the shield. Um, the only thing is, the way that the Ash did it last time, the reason why she shot it over the shield was because the shield is electrified, and electrified metal will destroy the breaching charge. But now the shield's not electrified anymore, the ADS doesn't really do much. And uh, yeah, okay, the ADS doesn't really do much because the Jaeger that was playing behind it gets naded by Wav anyway. Almost thought he was trying to go for a kill with that Ash Charge was Stove. He's got six to his name and zero deaths, oh. but he's just trying to clear a utility out. Prompted, will grab Wav. There we go, finally! One of those players oh. didn't have any kills a second ago grabs his first one, but he'll have to come back on the roam as Big Sexy grabs the Headless and Headless still living up to his name. Doesn't have it anymore, and Diffuser's been disposed of. He falls also a little worse for wear on the HP exchange. Finally, a whole bunch of that utility has to get expended to just knock one shield out of the 90 corridor, and it's finally successful, but it takes a long time. Here we go. Prompt is finally starting to make up a little. Fetty grabs the Vigil, finds two kills. He's just sitting at the top of the hatch waiting for an option. To the top of main stairs and see if someone wants to come through the aviator door, but he's just kind of staying put for the moment. Slaughterhouse really, really need to get this round, and so far, PDHM, they're only two men up, their attack's been stalled out. At this point, I don't really know what their push can possibly be, unless she can grab the fuser. He's now aware of the position of Prompt, and doesn't find the kill, but he gets the flick anyway! He grabs default across the map, Slaughterhouse stopped the bleeding by a little bit, but it takes four rounds on a Villa defense for them to do anything. I think a lot of that round was the poor utility usage in bar, in the bar hall. Mm -hmm. Classical hall was just a complete stall for PDHM. They threw flashbangs, they tried to burn. The ash charge, first one, got ads Second one, they got another ADS to back it up. They had to rotate their Zofia over, and because of the commotion over there, and they got, guys, I can't get the shield, I can't get the shield, the dude in study was on an island. It was an easy kill for who I think was, uh, I think it was prompted coming off the, the jump out. He was actually able to kill Headless. And there was another kill going the way of Slaughterhouse as well. Unfortunately, in that two versus three, they were completely separated. There was crossfires being held. Prompted won his 1v1 against LSG. Things went south. Need to locate and again, I mean, remember, that's what happened last night. So it was from PDHM before it got around, but still. Three was enough. PDHM have already won the half. Any rounds they need to get after this are just icing on the cake. And I still don't think with the way, even though Slaughterhouse got around back, the way PDHF had been playing, I mean, I think that was, that slip up may have been an outlier. And a 5 1 half is not yet out of the realm of it. Definitely isn't. And I'm wondering is whether or not Villa has been, like you said, one of those older mounts. We've had it in the rotation for ever since it got added to the pool. Like, as soon as it got delivered to us in Stage for the first time was the fact that it's been in here for so long that maybe they might only start Attackers flipping more towards, towards and an attacker side of focus. I think a really good example of that was the Dark Zero's E United game that happened in the NAL. Maybe it was just last Monday that ended up going a uh, streak for streak. It was attacker round streak wins, and then it was the same when we switched over to the other team. I can't remember if it was EU or DZ starting on attack in that one, but it was mostly attacker rounds one. So if that trend is something that can carry over to the Canadian division, I don't quite yet know. We still haven't been able to, you know, really identify trends yet, but for the moment, Veros is the one who grabs the Vigil away from Prompton, and he'll grab first kill. Finally, maybe 
the advantage can swing in Slaughterhouse's favor at the start of the round rather than PDHM just going super frag him. Slaughterhouse have decided to be a little more confident and ramp it up. I mean, I can say certainly, you know, losing 7 3 on your map that way to PDHM might be a blow to your confidence and that might have been why slaughterhouse were whiffing on all the fights i mean a lot of people will say any aimer will tell you you know a big portion of whether or not you can win your ones like that is how confident you are in the swing if you have doubts in your aim it will be shaky now it looks like slaughterhouse have woken up but as i say that tom on the long angle the maestro will go down you'll lose your maestro for zofia pretty even trade right now in this current meta this stove is still looking for more playing that pixel angle Wav over towards the classical hallway. There is a man behind bar. They're searching for it's Ash. Ash is now rotating into Vault. But so far, I mean, Slaughterhouse have done a decent time or a decent job of wasting the time over on this ABG Rome. Oh! oh! Left in the round, and what a pop shot from Wav. Veros only has one kill on the vigil, and now the Rome's been completely shut down. That's how you want to open things up, and PDHM swings the man count back in their favor with still plenty of time to maneuver around the site. Big Sexy, he finds one on red, does damage, but can't complete the kill as Wob will just rotate back down the stairs and can't maybe go for a nade spot from below as he does still have two of them in his back pocket for later use. Headless and LSG can make a double push back to the bathroom and they can pressure Big Sexy if they have this positioning and he goes through the rotate. The timing is awful and LSG finds the frag and now PDHM firmly in the driver's seat is Tuffy. Grabs his eighth and his ninth in quick succession. The aviator take is completely shut down and PDHM four rounds on a villa attack. This is only getting worse and worse. They had a decent study room, right? They had an okay study room. Slaughterhouse delayed about a minute and a half, minute we're 40. We're really just trying to find anything that we can call and, with uh, SH on at this point. Yeah, Slaughterhouse were, they were doing an okay time. Maestro decides, you know what? What if I go to benches? He got his head taken off by Stowe holding a tight pixel. Um, then Varas says, hey, what if I go to benches? And got his head <laughs> taken off by Webb. Two kills went the way of PDHM. The study roam did persist, Attackers but what happened there is it's a 5v3, or it's a 4 versus 3. At that point, they know one man is locked in AVG. If you sit stove on that doorway and you have default watching a drone, watching the classical hall, there's no way Ashes can rotate out without stove knowing. That's why stove stayed there so long, and that's why PDHM felt comfortable enough to just say, all right, stove, stay here, hold the Jaeger, we'll take the 3v2 on site. They catch the smoke rotating, because I guess the smoke decided instead of, he was going to use all his ammo pre-firing and try to rotate away amidst a reload. Perfect timing for the attackers to move in. It was a 3v1 on site, your other site player falls, and then what is Ash is going to do? So, guys, uh, I I'm still holding this Ash vault, things are okay on site, right? Tries to rotate out and Stove catches him because Stove is absolutely insane and he's 9-1 and one in 5 rounds. PHM just played that perfectly, like that was a, that was a great, I whoever called that rotate, I believe it was headless, fantastic IGL call there. I think something to also keep in mind, if we want to find any silver lining about Slaughterhouse's play, at least for the moment, it's that they recognize that they didn't do a good enough job through two separate maps on defensive halves going for bottom floor bomb sites and playing horizontally, and they've stuck to all top floor sites since then, even if they're all losses, and that's how we're going to end this defensive half by going to Trophy as opposed to either of the first floor sites. See if Slaughterhouse can't have some sort of impact. Veros has more of a play on the bottom of red stairs so he's a little bit below he can make a rotate down and stove just kind of passes him by maybe he's not in the right position but veros still looking for a kill and oh there we go a big frag as ashes knocks out stove massive kills that have been coming out from the ash are all of a sudden nullified and pdhm will need to find a method of adjusting default the other guy has been fragging out very well has also taken off the board as tom stops a free reckless solo push coming through statue and now pdhm aren't able to make anything of this round slaughterhouse are pretty darn keen to stop this one from also being a 5-1 deficit that they'll have to crawl themselves back out of I do think this is another case of PDHM maybe getting a little too ahead of themselves, not really acting off their info properly. So they'll lose two men for price of none oh, so far no. and make that three men. A great C4 there from Prompted as he gets the call from his teammate. He hears the barbed wire sound cue. 
there goes the explosive. Unfortunately for Wav, he's caught off by prompted swinging memo. And just like that, it's a five versus one. This is the most dominant round we've seen from Slaughterhouse yet. And it'll be flawless, in fact, with their second round of the game. They'll take it flawlessly. Finally, Slaughterhouse with a solid answer. But was it due to their well played? Or was it due to a little bit of a lackadaisical clear from PDHM? I'd say it's probably a combo of both. I think it's interesting that it takes three different attempts to trophy for Slaughterhouse to actually have an answer for the PDHM fast push aggression. And if I'm not mistaken, if we can get a pop of the scoreboard real quick, I want to check something about exactly how Stove is played. I want to see how many deaths this man's got, because if he's only got two deaths, that lines up with the same number of rounds that Slaughterhouse has won and has had almost a multi-kill in every other round regardless of that. He's got, at the very least, nine kills, if not already, into double digits, and he's playing lights out based on the drone work that PDH Dem... Oh, sorry, PDH yeah, Dem did still almost flawlessly. I want to say so. Like, yeah, we, let's let's double-check his stat line. Yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting that they decided Packers. to put him on smoke. Nine and two. He was playing smoke on theme park as well for the limited... Or, sorry, for the, that entire defensive half. No, not the entire half. I think he had maybe two to three rounds on smoke. But it's almost like if you have a guy that has really, really good aim, it, it, it's what, like one of our, our mutual friends, uh, Fate, somebody who has really, really good aim that always wants to play Jaeger, but because he's got good aim, why not slap him on the SMG-11? Yeah. Because I mean, if, if, if he can control that thing and play smoke and play area denial, that's honestly a pretty good combo. It's like uh, like Bosco, right? Yeah. He's got such good aim, slap him on the SMG-11, and he'll, he'll do magic. Like a, he's like a wizard. Whether he likes uh, it or not. He'll do it because yeah. he does it really well. <laughs> also, do it for the good of the team. Shout out to our homie Fate, by the way. One of the coolest guys. I really, really wish he was able to make it through CL Qualls to get USCL. Obviously, was a member of the previous Slaughterhouse roster before they opted to go for a Canadian Challenge League run. Really appreciate you, buddy. Uh, please carry me to Diamond. I need it. I'm sure he's punching the air right now seeing the performance that new Slaughterhouse. Oh, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he for. Not a good showing, but they can still turn it around. Right? True. Question mark? It's at least uh it's at least a four two half and not a five one, right? Improvement. Yeah. <laughs> silver oh. linings, everyone. Not the end exactly. of the world. Exactly. Yeah. Officer certainly playing like they got silver linings. What does that mean? No guarantee. It's silver. It's rank. Okay, and I thought my joke about terrorist time was bad. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse? Being no. compared to T bots or silvers. It's we'll okay. let, we'll, we'll, we'll let can, chat decide this one. They can probably slap me down any day anyway, bomb so. <laughs> uh, Well, all right, Slaughterhouse, this is your time to shine. This is your time to say, all right, it's an attacker side of Villa because there's no Thatcher or Maverick and neither team was playing Kali, so they just kind of ran in and found kills. So far, Slaughterhouse taking a, a slightly slower time. They do have, do have a Twitch. Their drone's not going to do anything, though, but I guess they have the F2. If Ross lands his shots, he can certainly be a mean weapon as whoever's playing in study. I think it's the Jaeger of Wav. No, who is that? That's default, actually. On the Wamai is taking that fight, and he'll get crossed by Prompted. He looks at the window, looks away, and tries to rotate, and that's when Prompted decides to strike. So first frag again, going the way of Slaughterhouse. I'm trying to see if he can't have as much impact on the Ash as Stove did when he was on his attacking half, and Art's already beginning to pay dividends. Big Sexy and Tom will start to push from that opposite side of the map, and Stove will have to back away as the Wilmidas do their job, and the Fried Nade lands, but only makes a hole in the floor. One from a 90 cross as Big Sexy tries to hit something, but LSG will take the cross on Veros instead of the Sledge nabbing his kill, leaving the EHM still in a 4 versus 4. Five seconds left, and prompted will still try to open up more of this wall to gain control of the wall side of the map. And Big Sexy and Tom now beginning to make their push into the Aviator. They're already, I believe, behind the vault. Or actually, no, perspective's a little bit bored. They're still back outside the top of Red Stairs and haven't made their approach in because the smoke canisters will deny them a plant onto the default vault spot. That seems to be where they're going for it. Smoke gas grenade dissipates. All of a sudden, he's going for the plant. One oh. more smoke grenade is Do not it? denying it. Lands just outside. And so the second. I'm oh, not sure so also fails. And there goes the diffuser. 40 seconds on the timer now. And Tom goes for the frag right after the plant. Everything's falling apart. As Slaughterhouse now have the control in their advantage. They just need to clear out three more players and stall for 30 seconds. There's one kill. There's two massive frags at the top of landing for Big Sexy. It all falls on the smoke. All of his gas canisters failing to stop this user. He'll run outside, grab one kill. He's got so little time with which to work with now. Stove, can he go for frags before this round is over? 
Slaughterhouse don't even need to worry about peeking anything and Stove just kind of waiting back, wondering how that round yeah, fell so Bob. out of their Ooh. hands. Great shot on Ashes, but it's just in garbage time. Any more kills he can get just adds the stats and the Slaughterhouse off the win. backs of a miracle plant. Take another one and push us to 4-3. Yeah, unfortunately, the smoke went too far overhead. It looked like maybe they thought the plant was going down by the, the games table. I don't know. That was weird. A, a whiffed smoke and a missed C4. Unfortunately, botched that plant denial from PDHM. And from there, the round was over. They held 90 control. And so when LSG and uh, WAV, I think it was, LSG and WAV tried to push together. It was an easy double for Big Sexy, especially with how low H... Or sorry, I think it was Headless and LSG tried to push together. Um, they were so low HP, that was an easy double for Big Sexy. <sighs> so rough stuff for PDHM. Slaughterhouse, there you go. That might be the resurgence you guys need. A brilliant ABG attack. And now, for the first time this match, they have strung attack two rounds together. And as many bombs They've already as matched can. their uh, last map record. And PDHM don't have map point, which is great. PDHM really falling a little bit by the wayside. Now they're going to go on dining. They're going to try their secondary site, which happens to be downstairs. Yet again, they will opt to pick up the Malusi that they were running religiously on theme park. Yes, trying to figure out if you have any momentum is... It's it's definitely possible because, yeah, it's it's two rounds strung together for the first time for Slaughterhouse. The only issue is it's one on defense, then one on attack, and... It's it's easy to say that, oh, you can still be in a rhythm if you were on one previous to your half switch, but Slaughterhouse weren't really in a rhythm when they were on defense. So, so far, it's two. We're still looking for really good things to say about how SH have taken their, their rounds thus far, but this is the closest the game has been since it was 0-0. Zero, zero. So, EDHM are looking for a response. It's only one round gone on defense, but if Slaughterhouse are able to pull something out, on their opponent's map pick, then maybe the estimation about Villa swinging more and more towards the attack rings even more true. Hmm. Well, we'll see if Slaughterhouse can continue to keep this ball rolling, as it looks like they want to do a bit of a horizontal clear. This is how PDHM were taking it. They were just kind of walking in behind the drones, getting fantastic entries. Ash is rotating over towards the window. Oh no, he's just claymoring it, just to protect from a jump out while they go for their heart clear. It's been slow from Slaughterhouse so far, but, you know, slow and steady wins the race. They've been thorough. Definitely. That's why has, this has been taking so much time. They'll send a drone upstairs to make sure no one's hiding by the main stairs and ready to cut down the players moving in from Art and down the hallway. A bomb has and been located. I think PDHM again, we saw the way they were playing that last round, were very aggressive. But now it appears they've definitely peeled back. They're playing a lot more default and a lot more conservative. We'll see if Slaughterhouse are able to crack it without PDHM feeding it. It's possible, but at this moment, Slaughterhouse kind of seems like they've taken a back seat on their attack aggression, and they're still trying to maybe bait out more intel or just wait for a second. Ooh. Prompted is the one to take a gunfight way across the map, and he's the one with Diffuser, and that's not the op you want taking the damage, but he doesn't die from the engagement, so at the very least, he can regroup on a different position, but he might want to force his way outside of Laundry instead. Slaughterhouse are very clustered up. One Nitro Soul knocks out the whole team. Lab grabs one, but doesn't peek the rest of the squad. And Headless will be the first man to fall as prompted. Finally wins the gunfight all the way past Laundry side. Oof. Control of sight now, I think, at this point for Kitchen, at the very least, has been ascertained by Slaughterhouse, but it's still a three versus three. Ashes is just all the way in the bomb site, looking for more picks where he can get it, and all of a sudden gets swung by the Lion, and now Veros with two kills of his own. Let's go for a Diffuser plant, it's all up to default. Diffuser has been down, but there's still 45 seconds left. No matter if default can win these fights, does down Veros, turns it into a one versus one. Ash springs all the way back inside and still grabs the frag. Malusi is full flashed and can't react fast enough. Ashes proves to be the difference maker as all of a sudden Slaughterhouse have tied us up. Here we go, Slaughterhouse. Resurgence is what we need. PDHM looked decent at the beginning. Slaughterhouse were taking a very long time. Of course, Wav got that first pick onto, I believe it was, onto Tom. However, because there was too much pressure upstairs that Slaughterhouse decided they were going to ignore, they were able to walk into dining or in the kitchen for free and find frags lsg got caught mid sprint too there's kind of a, a 
almost like a rule of thumb. If you're adjacent to where you think the attackers are, if you're adjacent to the site, you should not be holding shift. Ever. New no. defenders protected. And he sprinted right into the waiting arms. I thought LSU was gonna get a decent flank up, but not only did the sound cue the attacker to where he was coming from, he didn't even have a chance in the fight. He didn't, he didn't get his gun up. So another great round by Slaughterhouse. And this might be what we need to see for a closer game. We're 4-4. We're tied for the very first time this entire match. It's really up to Slaughterhouse. Just keep this momentum and keep shutting down PDHM. PDHM picked this one. This is their option, and they could very well have gone for it. At that point in the ban phase, it was Coastline, Consulate, or Oregon. Which, by the way, if we end up seeing Slaughterhouse take Villas where we're heading to next, they're trying to break what is at the moment. Not talking about the Caliber Curse, that's a completely different thing. We're not going to discuss that here. We're talking about the fact that not a single match so far in CL across either of the North American regions has gone to a map three to begin with. And I didn't know if that, that, that was even going to be necessary just because of how Theme Park played out and how the very beginning of Villa also did. Right now, Slaughterhouse trying to prove me wrong and, you know, come back with a little bit more gusto and fire than I called them terrorist on bots. I, they're doing a much better job now, but oh man, they had me scared to start. Maybe that's why, maybe that's why Slaughterhouse is coming back because he predicted PDHM. Mm, I am the master at jinxing everything, aren't I? Yeah, every team just. Why did Face it let me have this job if I'm terrible at doing this? I well, have no idea. There goes LSG again. Varas gonna get the first pick on the Lion, and Varas not having the greatest game last map. He's had some definitely very influential kills this map. That. A kill on the castle, not necessarily the biggest thing in the world, you know, poor gun, his utility's already out, the pick's a pick, but there's Wav on the big sexy, and the sledge, a much greater loss than the castle. Just for the moment, here we actually see the lion charges being used in full fight, we didn't get too much of that, as it was almost like kind of pocketed by uh, Veros when they were attacking Kitchen, and now we actually see whether that freezes any members of PDHM in place. Full study control, full aviator control, prompted, has disconnected almost every single round from the rest of the team. Doesn't have Diffuser in his back pocket, that's the Ash's job, so it's just a matter of prompted opening up holes across the site and forcing PDHM to not sit pretty in the corners that they've selected waiting for Slaughterhouse's push. Slaughterhouse are doing a what? much better job grouping up. I don't know if this is a rush at top floor, but so far Tom's finding frags, and there's just three members of Slaughterhouse just bundled up like they were last round as well. Whether this comes in the form of another exactly. rush, I don't know, but because they were all grouped up in the very back end of last round and took a site for free, we might see this again here. And he's also Ashes and Prompted now together over towards the Master Balcony. We've got a split push here from Slaughterhouse. Knife out from the Ash, try and bait out any shot. He will go and destroy the shield, protecting the player behind the bomb chassis. Gasnade goes out to stall the players at the door as well, and now bathroom is open, and Ashes can make his way, maybe pressure the player inside of Astro. It's currently Tuffy Stove, who's cutting off the players, specifically Tom with the diffuser. Another gas grenade goes out. He's got one more and 35 seconds left, and he is really relying on Wev to protect him from any kind of bathroom pressure. He knows he's got an angle to throw it out or his remaining gas canister at the door as Wav is looking towards the master window. Tom is going to start getting the plant down. There's the EE1D to cut everyone off as well. But no, Faraz goes down and Tuffy Stove gets another one with the shotgun. Two versus three, but the future's down. Wav inside a bathroom gets one. He's traded up by Ashes, but there's only 10 seconds left. Can he find the last two kills? Headless and Tuffy Stove are not in any position to trade each other out either. He knows there's one in the corner. He'll pre fire around. He'll catch the bandit, but it's triple zero. He's got to stick it, and it's an easy cleanup for Tuffy Stove. Shotgun out, and there we go. Stove with a 3k to clutch out the round, stopping the plant, killing the cover, and shutting down Slaughterhouse. PHM finally picking up a round after a little bit of bleeding from Slaughterhouse's quick attacks, but they'll swing the round count towards them for the first time in a little while. They're obviously getting comfortable with the lead, and like I said at the back end of Theme Park, You've got a pretty good advantage, just don't get complacent. And they managed to pull a very, very fast round out of the books and force Ashes to try to plant with only a second remaining. That's your job as a defender. Waste as much time as possible, even if it doesn't come down to getting picks. And when it's all said and done, if you prevent the attacking team from getting that diffuser in place, congratulations, your job is done effectively and you can go home and try it again next time. Four to five, and if I can remind everyone very quickly about what we're fighting for, the last match we saw Honor go up against the Slats. This is still in Group A. The winner of this game goes up Attackers against that dominating Honor squad for the rights to 
have one more game and play for that Canadian Challenger League relegation spot. It's not a position I really envy. Honor is probably one of the odds-on favorites to go all the way towards that relegation game. And Slaughterhouse and PDHM, whoever wins this one, is going to be facing them at some point down the road. Or sorry, next week, next Sunday, in fact. So PDHM want to keep this momentum going against Slaughterhouse because if Slaughterhouse is showing signs of weakness, you need to exploit it, prove that you've got what it takes, and then ride that streak of confidence going into facing Honor next week. That's if they can pull this off. And of course, speaking of honor, they did win uh, CACL last split. They did. In stage one. That was a mainstream are, uh, broadcast. Our homies Parker nice. and uh, Michael were the ones on that cast. Mm. <laughs> I, I was waiting for the mmm joke to come out at some point. We had to wait till day two. Come on, man. I was waiting I for that the whole time. I remember. Oh, I love, dude, I love kicks. I love Kicks casting. He's he's like the one that really got me into into Pro Siege. Before, like, I would watch all the streams like back in year one, season one, on mute because they, I mean, they weren't great. And then Kick started casting. I was like, wow, this guy's great. And I'd still get freaked out by the fact he's only like two or three years older than me. And Ash is gonna get freaked out by the fact that he is yet again no frag. LSG with that first one. The PDHM already up one man, and they're looking for that map and match point as Tom. Melee's his own drone. I think he may I think he accidentally meleeed it instead of picking it up. I was about to say that's definitely not in Slaughterhouse's playbook unless uh get the intel you need, then don't oh, use it anymore. No. Okay, the perfectly placed nitro, but he can't capitalize on the intel. Tom will come back with 10 HP as PHM has no idea that that down happened unless they saw it with their own eyes. So the push will come unabated. Tom will reclaim Diffuser from where it sits in statue, and now the first frag will probably be LSG at the bottom of Astro Stairs, but will force all the way back into Bicycle and Mudroom. And Slaughterhouse can continue unabated through the top floor of the site as it appears PDHM didn't put nearly as much pressure towards the master side of things, and either focused on downstairs roam presence or anchoring on Aviator. The thing I'm very concerned about right now is that for this entire attacking half, Slaughterhouse had had Tom, their entry player, carry the diffuser, and he's only at 20 HP. We saw how close the gas grenade and how close that C4 from the Kaid was to killing him, and the only reason he survived was because he was full, but now holding the diffuser with basically one shot's worth of HP, I mean, if he's even in range of that C4, he'll get downed, and that'll stop the plant. That'll stop what won them that initial round on AVG. So it's definitely something to keep in mind going into the execute and something I'm personally worried about. One breaching charge goes out, will destroy some piece of utility, maybe the shield from stove or default. As Big Sexy is currently tasked with stopping the flank from Wav. Wav will not check the landing and he'll get fragged out by LSG from 90. Gets a pick of his own on a Veras. He shuts down the lion. No more EE1Ds to lock the defenders in place either. Prompted disconnected from the current push over towards the study Balkus. Tom will take even more damage from that gas grenade. Big Sexy as well. Knock, knock. And then what happened? We're gonna have Big to wait and now figure out if default still has more positioning. As prompted as the first one to get taken out of commission, and a one versus four now is Tuffy. He's got 16 kills on this map thus far. The streak continues, and PDHM now find themselves on map match series point. Right to face honor heading into next week. I think for the moment, Chrome might have DC'd on my end, so. Hello, chat. You have to deal with my wonderful voice at least for a second. Oh, wait, is he back? Crow, speak. Let the oh, world happened? know you're here. What Are happened? you here? Apparently, you disconnected. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. Did I disconnect on the on the TeamSpeak side or the vMix side? Or both? <sighs> One of those sides. Oh, uh, well. One of those is correct. That's unfortunate. Hey, you oh, had well. a good cast. I tried to clean up and do it in your honor. I hope I, 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 hope I did your call justice. That's okay. Are you proud of me? Crow? Yes. Crow, very please, proud. please. I, I, I need public affirmation. Very proud. Yeah! That is that is a cast I would smooch for. <sighs> Can't happen yet, man. Social distancing. Give it give it a couple months. Hopefully. Hopefully. Desperately. I'm waiting. Or if we can get a studio. Hey, face it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well. Now I'm sad. No, don't be sad. It was a good cast. And by the way, we're also on match point. That's true. Um, that round. PHM killed him. 
<laughs> that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of all there was to it. Uh, Ashes died on the entry. Varas got cut down from 90 because either no one was watching or LSG just won the straight up gunfight. The man over towards Study Balco, he was trying to cover the guys pushing over by the, uh, the red landing side. Uh, just didn't shoot at Wamai. And then, I mean, that was so unfortunate from Slaughterhouse. So Tom had Diffuser, right? Because he's the primary plant. Right. He was at one HP. So he was like, all right, big sexy, yo, come here. Come here. You take Diffuser because you can survive more and then I'll cover you. And then Big Sexy went down to 20 HP. So that was, that was really unfortunate. Now PDHM, I mean, are PDHM powerful enough to break the caliber curse? Uh, <laughs> let's not talk about that. <laughs> Mostly because hey, it's not a full on prediction. You caught me unprepared with that one. What I will say is if it happened in an actual video, I would actually be a little bit more concerned about my prediction coming true or not coming true because either way, <laughs> I win. Welcome to my world where my predictions are either working with me on my branding or uh, are correct, in which case I win either way. There's the Nitro again? cell! Tom again! So much fortunate. Dope. He's just looking for wow. picks and there's Nitros from below and oh, another there's another one, one telegraphed perfectly. No, there goes shot. Tom! No chance! It's a one-two punch with Nitro cells. Who plans that? There were two? Who I thought, okay, that? so he did shoot the first one. He shot the first one, he's like, all right, it's clear, and then the second one came out? <laughs> that is so unfortunate for Tom, but... That is sick. Saving Grace, they just used all three of their C4s Taking on killing an Ash. Yeah, I know he missed Crater, but they used all three trying to get it. God production, trying to... Trying to seem like I don't know what I'm talking about, but it is a Breaking decent the fourth utility. Wall as usual, Crow. Always can count on you yeah. to do something like that. You're pulling a Ryan Reynolds Deadpool move. All of a sudden, the fourth wall is broken. I love talking to Crater on broadcast, but that is a lot of stuff from PDHM to just deal with Tom. So if it comes down to the plant, they might not have enough to deal with it, and that's a great frag to the floor, knocking off walls. Slaughterhouse need a break. The moment PDHM are putting all of the stops on him and having a man down, at least in the early stages, is not going to help Slaughterhouse's confidence, even with Headless still only having one kill to his name. There isn't a single member on Slaughter that has a positive KD ratio, yet they've pulled a couple of these rounds back, so they're not all lost. There's still some good tape to go back and look at if they're not able to clean this match up and get mistakes oh, yeah. still right before it, but prompted wow. gets one and traded back out by wav is okay the man with 16 kills can't get any more at least for this the course of this round but it might not matter as lsg grabs big sexy a two versus three veros and ashes oh. by themselves and ashes wins the fight on lsg all right there's still a chance for this with only 10 seconds left the fuser must be reclaimed and planted and maybe both of these frags cleaned up as well default oh, no, he doesn't default. have his position scouted grabs the kill perfectly diffuser has been down default. and default the sub in for pdhm sends us to villa's conclusion pdhm gaming 2-0 on slaughterhouse they will go to face honor esports next week and slaughterhouse are the ones put into their own slaughterhouse and absolutely destroyed. 7374 PDHM really flipping the script from their previous game. I mean, 16 and 4 for Stove, a 4.0 KD. 10 and 6 for Wav, 10 and 7 for Default the sub. I'm pretty sure Default is more of like has more of a coaching role. I think, if I'm not mistaken, on PDHM, but he just showed that. I mean, he's got, you know, like, that might as well have been Gotcha subbing in for EG. That performance was admirable. Gotta mention it's Gotcha subbing in for EG and not Gotcha subbing in for TSM. Yeah, dude. two completely different Gotchas. <laughs> <laughs> Same man, different energy. Oh, man, Gotcha, please come back to Siege. We need more of that coach energy. Anyway, PDHM pulling out a pretty darn impressive win, even though we had a little bit of a scare in Villa just to, you know, maybe slaughterhouse can mount some sort of comeback when they go on their attacking half but villa still rings true it's a defense map it's a stronghold in that sense it will always be that way congratulations on pdhm for grabbing their victory we'll try to get an interview locked in in just a moment here but check out some of the replays from how this one transpired it's 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 so so cool to see this kind of performance in canadian cl because that helps to set the precedent and build the story oh, dude, the for what it's going to look like next week yeah Ooh -hoo. i love that play from stove 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 i remember last um 
last stage. Nice Hacks was a bit of the... He was like a middle-of-the-pack performer in mm-hmm. BHM, and something happened. He flipped the switch, and he just popped off. I mean, I think he had like nine kills at the end of Theme Park. 16 and 4. Pretty much. What happened <sighs> was, if Stove died, they lost the round. Yeah. And that was kind of... That was the story. Stove just absolutely performing to his best. Wav as well. Double digits both maps. Same thing with Default. Default actually dropping 10 kills, both on Theme Park and Villa. Those three are like the... What's dynamic duo, but trio? Uh, Titanium trio. Or terrific trio. The Titanic that... trio. No, 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 no. T- Titanic's bad because that would then mean that they fail. They're like three really oh. bad players. Do you... Come on, you... I Growing up in a bookstore, don't, don't say... remember what the Titanic actually did. That's not I what mean... PDHM did. I think if anyone's the Titanic, that's Slaughterhouse. They're first outing under a new org and they perform like this. It's not a good look, but it's also not the end of the world, but it is the end of their attempt to make it that CL relegation game. That's I mean, they'll, they'll face up against the Slots next week. The Slots put up a pretty good fight against Honor. It was still a 2-0 win. The curse hasn't been broken, by the way. We're going to go into our third match of the day later. And there still won't be a single team that's able to force a map three anywhere at all. How are we at the stage? Um, I guess the teams just don't like having to go to the decider map, flipping a coin for sides. And they, they don't trust the virtual coins. Uh, they decide they just wanna just wanna end it in quick throw. That no, I no one has believe, Flynn's luck. No one has Flynn's luck on the coin toss. I can't believe default sat prone next to the couch for that long. And, and timed wasn't it drunk. that perfectly too. Yeah. As soon as the Zofia went through the doorway and looked left, well, I guess, wait, it's reversed. Left? No. Yes. This yes. Is, there this you is have our it. left. Okay. You've it's got really it. confusing because it's like it's reversed. So I'm pointing <laughs> to the right, but on stream right. I'm pointing to the left. As soon as Zofia pointed left, LSG just popped up, destroyed him. And I think it was the whoever was coming in from China got fragged out as well. And even if Default lost that fight, it would have hit triple zero, and PDHM still had one guy left. Right, the, that round has so much impact just because it happens with only a couple of seconds left. They can go for Diffuser right in, but they just don't have the intel. And all of a sudden, there's a Malusi double kill and sends us, or sorry, doesn't send us anywhere, means we don't have to worry about playing Oregon. However, we do have one interview before we get out of this segment, and we toss it over to our third matchup of the day. We will take one quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with an interview.
Welcome back to Canadian Challenger League. We got one of these th th one of these to get through right before we end up going to our third match. And we are talking with Default, the coach and the sub from PDHM Gaming. Dude, congratulations, first of all, on your 2-0 victory over Slaughterhouse. How are you feeling after a win like that? Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm feeling good. Uh, some things we can improve on. Some We didn't play our best, but I feel like some certain situations we can kind of tighten up. Uh, but overall, it was, it was a good win. Was it something that you were a little bit confused about how this new look Slaughterhouse team that used to be known as Axios would perform because they've had a couple of roster moves? I mean, you had done the same thing, but how do you try to prepare for a team that doesn't quite look the same as they did in the previous stage? What's that process like? Uh, we pretty much had to throw out like all the VODs from stage one when, like, when we played Axios before uh, because of the roster change. I know Prompted, you know, he's been in uh, the USCL division before. I know he's a very good player. Uh, I don't really know a whole bunch about the rest of the players on their team but 
um, we pretty much had to just stick to our strats and kind of like mid game adapt to whatever they tried to push. Yeah, no, I hear it. Uh, one thing I wanted to double check real quick. The performance of Stove, the artist formerly known as Nice Axe, I think we double checked the amount of rounds that you guys lost. I think every single time Stove died was a round you didn't win, and then the man pops off with 16 kills right at the back end of that. Is it too specific to say that you guys were able to win rounds based on how much pressure he was applying to Slaughterhouse over the whole course of the series? I mean, it's, it was, he's, he's an amazing smoke player, too. Like, he's just, he's just insane on smoke. Um, and then on, pretty much on offense, we kind of just let him play what he wants to play, whether it's Ash, or Jackal, or anything like that. We just kind of let him, like, feel out the game and see what he needs to play, and then just go from there. Yeah. He's kind of like, like the wild card in that sort of sense. I mean, a wild card, but he also kind of seemed like a stronghold, a bastion, if you will, for just what you guys were able to do on either attack or defense. It was really, really cool to see. On the flip side yeah. of that, though, I did kind of want to ask you about Headless. I know we were talking about moving into a new IGL role, but we saw one kill over the course of a whole series, but he also didn't die very often. He looked like he was still sticking to a very hard support role, and the rest of the team is able to just work around him, and he doesn't have to worry about doing anything aside from, you know, his job as a support player. Is that intentional, or what, or was the, the the idea more he can do the IGL work and, and just kind of hang back? Well, that's one thing that the uh, that the the uh, scoreboard doesn't show, right? It's we have a lot of like pre pre placed drones. He's always in the back. He's always on cams on flank watch. Like um, pretty sure like on theme park, we didn't really play a nomad, which you see very often on theme park. You see nomad to cover because there's normally three ways you can flank top floor from like yellow arcade or from dragon. Yeah. But we have pre placed cams on those like those areas that 95% of the rounds headless after before and then after he gets wall open he's just on those cams 24 7 like our flank is covered and that way that way we don't have a nomad we can pick another op get some different utility and attack the site in multiple different ways so that's normally how, the, how we do that so his kills he, he's doing he's setting up everybody else for kills put it that way yeah, and I think he was doing a pretty effective job just because of the sheer amount of frags that everyone else was having, and it's not that he necessarily had to do any of that work himself. It makes perfect sense. One thing that I wanted to to see if we couldn't do more is because Canadian Challenge League hasn't really had streams in the past, this is the first time we're really doing this, I was trying to go through and find you know more info on how you guys do, how you work out, but the problem is we're still trying to give you guys an, a really good, broad introduction to the rest of the siege scene at large. So kind of give us your side of the story. How are you guys, you know, been a team for this long? give us a little bit about who and what pdhm is and maybe what we can continue to expect moving forward um i mean we play pretty much we like i don't know we, we i think we play very very structured uh like we have a certain you know thing we want to do defense attack we have a planned out pre-placed drones everything you know normal and obviously just stove wants to do you know what he can in any given round mm -hmm. if it works it works it's time it works so we, we let him we let him go for it um but pretty much i don't know we just we like to feel the game out, adapt to what we need to do. Uh, if we have to like move some strats around, we do. Like I don't know if you see, like we have like for AB or games in Villa, we had our first strat necessarily didn't work, so we have you know backups. We have a tertiary as well if that doesn't work. Like we have multiple strats for different sites depending on like just feeling out the game. Um, that's pretty much all I can really give at this point. Uh, it's got a lot, still have work to do, still have, you know mistakes we made that we just gotta like vod review and then uh, fix for the uh, for honor. Yeah, I hear it. I actually did want to ask you real quick. You're heading into that match next week against Honor Esports, the same team that was first place in the previous stage. Is that something that you find really daunting, I suppose? Or is it more a matter of we're just going to continue to play our own game and then if we're able to catch Honor napping, then we'll just kind of ride the momentum that we have from this game into the next one. What's your process for going up against a team that has that current reputation? Well, obviously you have to respect them. Like I know some of the players on, the other, on, on Honor. I know that they're, they're good players. They've been together for a long time, even from uh, from when Canadian Nationals, a lot of them played together there as well. So I know they have a really good chem. Uh, but the same thing, like we couldn't get really VODs on Axios. Outside of the two maps here, they only have anything on us because LSG is new, WAV is new. I'm playing like it's not really a lot of VODs. So we can look back at their stuff from stage uh, from stage one if I think they're still there. I don't know if they are. And then uh, go from what we saw today against Dislats and then just adapt from there, really. Yeah, I hear it. All right, before I let you go, anything that you want to say to the fans, any of the PDHM supporters in chat, of which I've seen quite a lot just kind of scrolling through the past couple of minutes, anything you want to say to your supporters and kind of give a farewell message before we send you off? Just uh, thanks for coming out. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully we can make you guys proud and beat Honor next weekend. Awesome. Really appreciate it, Default. <laughs> yeah, and shout out to Wick as well. Yeah, we wanted to make yeah, sure shout we to Wick, man. Out of the equation. Yeah.
Hopefully he's able to get back in the fight at some point, but your performance Hopefully. still was something that was a, a really nice thing to behold. Congratulations again Thank on you. your win. We'll see you next week for honor. Take care, dude. Thank you, Jacob. You too. Bye. I saw something in chat say, oh, the default kind of looks like a cheat. I'm kind of looking at it, honestly. Maybe. I don't oh. know. I mean, if he took off the hat, probably. Oh, maybe. But, uh, <laughs> wow. PDHM absolutely lights out performance um, on really both maps. Um, you know, before it was a 747 win for then known as Axios, now Slaughterhouse, and PDHM flipped the script and took it one round more dominantly. So plus one for them. So thank y'all for coming out and watching this game. But we still have another one. We've got two more games today. The next one is going to be. Oblivion versus Windstorm? You got it. There you go, yeah. Yeah, yep. Oblivion versus Windstorm. Actually, we can look at the bracket so I can make sure that I'm not wrong in that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Or, uh, oh, never mind. Fairy tells me we're just looking up the Darn it. There we go. All right. <laughs> Honor 2 over to Slats, PDHM, 2 over Slaughterhouse, Honor Esports, and PDHM, the only two more, the only two teams from Group A currently still in relegate, or, uh, in Pro League relegation zone. Slats and Slaughterhouse, whoever loses that will be in Challenger League relegation zone. Not the place you want to be. And something that I, I'm pretty darn sure either the Slats or Slaughter can still kind of work their way out of. It's really a case of it being the first series of the season and you're playing for reals as opposed to just going for scrims and trying things out. So I don't want to say it's way, way, way too early to call for either one of those teams who might have to play in that relegation spot going into the future. But at the end of the day, either the Slats or Slaughterhouse is going to be at the bottom of that group and will end up playing in that relegation series, assuming that they stick together. So... At the end of the day, that's us. Oh, sorry. For all of Group A, we are all done for the day. We're going to pass it over to Group B. Benny and Cookies will be taking you back through Oblivion versus Windstorm as we start up the Group B games. Then Crow and I will be back a little bit later on talking about the final game of the day. If, I, if my memory serves me right, it's Oceanus against the brand new Christian Depth Esports. We'll be right back after a very short break. Thank you very much.